Today, we will compare the cameras of the new iPhone 16 Pro Max with a large full-frame professional mirrorless camera, which in a full kit, body, plus lens, plus SSD costs $3,100, while the smartphone is sold for half the price, starting at $1,400 for the version I have with 512 gigabytes. For three long years, I've been waiting to upgrade to a new smartphone, and for the first time in my life, I decided to try an iPhone. So, let's unbox it. I can't wait any longer. I chose the natural titanium model because it reminds me of the style of PCs and other Apple products. Here they are, those tripopophobia inducing works of art, already with some dust on them. By the way, I think Apple made the right decision by not including a charging block in the box. Just think about how many unnecessary charging blocks you have lying around from various smartphones and other devices. That's just waste you won't use. So Apple decided to take care of you in this way. I see the phone's frame is metal. It's scary to even imagine what this smartphone is capable of when it comes to cracking nuts. It might even give serious competition to the legendary Nokia 3310. This video gets a million views. We'll test which smartphone is better at cracking nuts. Or every million views plus 10 kilogram of nuts that need to be broken by an iPhone. Right, what's more interesting to you? I got plenty of nuts. What surprises me most is how Apple advertises their iPhones as a tool for filmmaking, showing in video that they use the native camera app where you can't even adjust the ISO. Of course, I'm not as cool as those guys, so I'll be using a third-party free app for video recording, but we'll also check out the native app. Let's start with the specs and video capabilities. Our iPhone is equipped with three cameras. The main one, which has the largest sensor, is one in 1.3 inches, 48 MP, and a 24 millimeter lens. We'll talk about the other cameras later. When compared to a full frame camera, the sensor sizes are significantly different. The iPhone sensor is only 9.6 by 7.2 millimeters, though for a smartphone, that's not too small. Meanwhile, the camera sensor is 36 by 24 millimeters. However, the camera has half as many megapixels, 24 versus 48 on the iPhone. By the way, the camera's lens also starts at 24 millimeters, just like the iPhone iPhone and extends to 70 millimeters. The video capabilities of both devices are truly impressive. Both record an Apple ProRes HQ 10-bit 4x2x2, but the iPhone supports up to 4K at 120fps, while the camera records in 5.8K at 30fps, and 120fps is only available in 1080p. The native camera app can't boast a wide range of settings. For example, I couldn't find where to adjust the ISO. For photos, that's still okay since the smartphone shoots in 12-bit RAW format, allowing you to adjust white balance and exposure after taking the shot. But with video, it's a different story. An interesting feature is the cinematic mode, where the camera simulates depth of field as on fast lenses. I must say it simulates this fairly well. For comparison, here's what an image at 24 millimeters with an aperture of 2.8 looks like on a full frame camera. It's quite different from what's on the left, but if we switch to two times, the image looks more natural. Now let me show you the difference in video quality. Here's a recording in H.264 on a 13mm camera, this is H.264 on a 24mm camera, and this is the same on 120mm. And here are the same 120mm but an Apple ProRes 10-bit 4x2x2 with Apple Log. As you can see, the image in this format looks better, so I'll only be showing it from now on. If we compare it with the camera, the 77mm camera lens provides better detail. But if you add digital zoom up to 120mm on the camera, like on the iPhone, the iPhone looks better. What do you think this was shot on? And this. This is the camera, and this is the smartphone, both at 24mm and 4K at 25fps. Look who I ran into. I call him the utilizer of humanitarian aid. What do you think this was shot on? And now this. This was shot on the iPhone, and this on the camera. As you may have noticed, there's some shake in the iPhone footage while the camera's footage looks smoother. That's because I turned off stabilization on the iPhone as it reduces image quality by using a crop, whereas the camera has in-body image stabilization. We'll check the stabilization separately, but for now, let's talk about image quality. Recording on the wide-angle camera also looks pretty good, especially if shot in ProRes Lodge. What was he looking at there? Here's what he was watching. As you may have noticed, the image on the smartphone is always darker than on the camera. Come back! If you have a full frame camera, you can almost forget about low light issues. Well, almost because the camera has a larger sensor and lens providing greater light gathering ability. Plus, it produces less noise at high ISO values. 
We'll talk more about that a bit later. Now, let's move on to shooting in 4K at 120fps. This camera can shoot 120fps, but only in full HD, so let's compare them. Here's footage from the camera, and here's footage from the iPhone. Once again, this is the camera in 1080p, and this is the iPhone in 4K. In terms of detail, the iPhone clearly wins in this mode. By the way, the iPhone is using automatic settings in the standard camera app here, and they work quite well. I also forgot to mention that the iPhone records in this quality only on an external SSD, and thank god I didn't have to reformat it to another format for recording. Here's the camera at 70mm and 120fps, and on the left, the iPhone with a double crop and 120fps, since only one iPhone camera can record 120fps at 24mm. In this case, the full frame camera delivers a better image both in terms of detail and depth of field. Now, let's test these devices in very low light conditions. I left everything on auto on the smartphone and on the camera. I set ISO to 51,000 and left the shutter speed at 1 and 50, although I could have set it to 1 and 25 and the aperture to f2.8. To give you an idea of how dark it is here, I can barely see anything with my eyes! Here's the camera with noise reduction, and here's the iPhone with noise reduction. Almost nothing changed because the built-in noise reduction is quite powerful. I also increased the exposure and tried to lift the shadows in both cases. Here's what that looks like. As you can see, the camera shows some green noise. This can be partially fixed in video editing software, but I didn't do that. Despite the heavy noise, the camera has much better detail than the iPhone, and the image is brighter. The downside of the camera is that in such poor lighting, the autofocus barely works, so I had to adjust it manually. Meanwhile, the smartphone handles it perfectly in any lighting conditions. Without further ado, let's now take a look at the night mode on the iPhone. The maximum exposure time allowed by the native iPhone app is 5 seconds. I didn't bother looking for a third-party photo app, to be honest. The camera can set an exposure time of up to 60 seconds, which makes it a much better tool for such tasks. It takes the photo in 60 seconds, and then another 60 seconds to reduce noise. Here's what a raw image in the dark looks like on the iPhone, and here's an image from the camera with a 60 second exposure. By the way, in this mode, the iPhone can take photos at a maximum of 12 megapixels, while the camera can shoot from 24 to 108. You may ask, where do the 108 come from if I said it only has 24 megapixels? The camera has 24 real megapixels, but there's a special mode where it can take 100 108 megapixel shots, as long as the camera isn't moved during shooting. Here's a photo I took on the camera with a 1 second exposure, 80 megapixels and 14 bit RAW. Now look at what you can do with such an image in RAW format on the camera. You can literally pull information from hell, correct it, apply noise reduction, and get a great image. When compared to the smartphone, you can't pull out information from it, only hell itself. It just gives a very red image, while the camera works wonders in such situations. Here's a photo in JPEG at 13mm, and here's the same photo without adjustments in RAW. This is JPEG at 120mm, and here's RAW. On the left, the camera at 120mm with 12 megapixels, and on the right, the camera in 108 megapixel mode. If you zoom in, you can see that the 108 megapixel image is the most detailed. Here are both cameras at 24mm. I think the one on the right looks a little better. I can't help but say this. May God bless my only sponsor! My friend, if you're watching this video, I'm sorry I haven't mentioned you in previous videos even though you've been subscribed for months. Know that I appreciate it. Thank you for your support. And finally, since I almost forgot, let's compare autofocus and stabilization. Starting with autofocus, at first glance it seems there's no difference in focus speed, but I noticed that the smartphone performs slightly better when tracking slowly moving objects. As for stabilization, the smartphone is also a bit better here. The camera currently uses only in-body stabilization and it performs quite well, especially since the image doesn't have that ugly crop. If you enable electronic stabilization with the crop, the image will become smoother, but still not as good as on the smartphone. I should note that my hand holding the camera was shaking more because this camera is quite heavy. 
Theoretically, that should help with stabilization, but not in my case. In conclusion, I have to say that the iPhone really impressed me in terms of video recording. A smartphone that records in a professional codec and log mode. But for this price, by the way, if anyone didn't know, I live in Ukraine and bought it for 2000 bucks. In Europe, the price is the same. Even for $1,400, they could have added the ability to record video in 12-bit RAW, at least at 30 frames per second. That would be revolutionary, because no smartphone in the world can shoot in that format. Plus, we already saw ProRes recording in the previous iPhone. I'm confident that the processor in this smartphone can easily handle such a video format, considering the sensor isn't very large. What do you think about this? Let me know how the image on the iPhone looks to you as the footage of the camera itself was shot on it. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!